Hello and welcome back. Today I am going to give you a list of reasons to use lists when getting young people talking. I love lists. It's not a secret. If you've ever had the joy of working with me, you'll know I love lists. So why lists? Okay, number one. Number one reason is they are a great way in. So get kids to write a list about songs they like, films they've enjoyed, books that made them think, anything that, you know, might just tap into something, uh, get them get them going. And just remember that your list is not an end, it's the starting point of the conversation. So once you've got the list, oh, what is it about this song that you particularly like? Oh, were there any characters in this film, book, whatever, that you particularly identified with? Why is it that you chose this this film? Did, you know, how did it make you feel? Or, you know, you can, you can ask endless questions once you've got the starting point. Um, so you're basically allowing the kid to identify good ways into conversation for you so it's a way in and it's a way in whether you are looking to have a kind of deep and meaningful conversation with a kid you're trying to establish a relationship or if you're just looking for like an icebreaker with a class for example um, they're yeah great way in love lists love lists number two lists are really accessible so you can use lists whether you are working with um, kids who are um, uh, kind of gifted and talented or kids with special needs, whether you're working with kids who might have um, barriers to communication, they might have English as a second language, uh, you can use them with anyone really. You can use lists with people who find it hard to engage um, verbally or using the written word because you can do it with pictures, you can write the list for them, you can find different ways of making this accessible. Lists are a lot less daunting uh, for a kid than the idea of having to write like a whole paragraph of prose or having to um, Oh, the thing of always, when I'm trying to find words about communication, I lose my words. Uh, so having to verbalise, um, writing a list is easier than having to verbalise. This is one of the reasons I like lists. Okay, next, number three, um, you can use lists to identify issues. And number four, you can use them to identify positives. So you can use them to like find pros and cons, basically. So you can use them to find issues. So for example, if you've got a kid who is having like flares up of anger or anxiety or any other kind of difficult um, thoughts, feelings, behaviours, then we can sit down and go, oh, okay, let's think of like six times in the last week uh, when you felt really angry. Um, or let's think of, of, of you know, five times uh, today when you felt anxious or whatever it might be. So you the list to help identify. Um, we can also identify the positives though. So, um, okay, so let's think of three people who make you feel safe. Let's think of five things you can do when you're feeling anxious. Let's think of um, four places where you feel safe. Okay, so we can use them to identify positives as well. Here are three things I'm proud of, 10 things I like about myself. You know, use lists to identify positives um, and to build on confidence and self-esteem too. One, uh, just slight caveat, if you're going to use a list to try and build self-esteem, make sure you've had a think about how you would populate that list before you work on it with a young person because if they are struggling with their self-esteem and they can't fill the list up, then you need to be able to make suggestions. If you suggest they write the list and they can't fill it and you can't fill it as well, that actually can be quite negative. So have a little think ahead. Okay, so we've used the list to identify issues and identify positives as well, conversely. Um, then we can also like get a little bit clever with our list. We can use ranking. So you might have identified 10 times in the last week when I felt angry. Um, and then we might say, okay, let's put those in order from the time when you felt the most angry to the time when you felt the least angry. Um, and then we can identify, okay, these are the issues that we really need to be dealing with first. Um, then we can also do things like um, thinking about, you know, here are the five strategies you've identified that make you feel calm. Let's think about the ones that you think are the most useful that you could use all the time um, and, and put those at the top of the list. Um, and again, it can just be a good way of um, helping to kind of consolidate what we've discussed, helping to prioritise what we're going to work on and helping to identify uh, really helpful strategies um, and to think about what's working well. Finally, you can use lists to explore different contexts. So you might, for example, be working with a young person in school um, and you might need to think about, OK, we've got some really good ideas about how to help with your anxiety day to day at school. But what happens when you go home? What happens at the weekend in the holidays? So we might then use um, our list and think about, OK, so we've written a list of like five things that help me to feel calmer when I'm anxious. These work really well at school. How would that list change if we were thinking about it at home? 
might also think about, you know, here are four places that I can go for help. And again, these might be tailored to school or they might be tailored to home. And then you might flip it and think about how would I use that in a different environment? Uh, another example might be a young person who's struggling, say, with anger. Um, and you might say, OK, so these are ideas that work, um, you know, when you've come to see me and we're trying to help you calm down. Now, let's have a think about what if you were in a lesson and you began to feel really angry? What strategies might work then? So you can think about context as well. So basically, lists are great. Love lists. Uh, yeah, lists are great. And and you just need to think about, just just get creative with them, really. I think people think lists are really boring. Um, I don't think lists are really boring. Um, and I think that you'll have loads of ideas that you can add to this as well. Maybe you have a list of things to add to my list of reason to use lists. Um, so yeah, get using lists. They're a great tool. Um, and if you find yourself with a young person and the conversation isn't really flowing, or you're not really finding it very easy to think of like practical ideas of ways to help, then just you know, sit with them, scribble a list down together. Just get your ideas down on paper. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just for you and them just to get the conversation and the ideas flowing. I hope it helps. Good luck. Bye.